I'm Canada. A um, friend of mine told me that the last video I did, or actually the video just before, uh, one thing that I realized when I use the typical NFPA MM Base 01 templates and I create some schematics is that when I get to something like a wire designation or more a connection definition point, I do have and I can assign a color, a gauge, which by the property arrangement will display it. Some of it may, because of the different layers set here, may be set to invisible, like the cross section, for instance, is set to be invisible. So I don't really see it if I do not click on the letter U, which is a shortcut to view invisible elements. And the other thing is it actually takes up three different lines. So it takes up a lot of room around my wire. Another thing is the color, I personally prefer using the potential. So basically the 16 black, I do prefer when I don't have to assign it here onto the wire itself. So what I actually did is I modified slightly this template. This is what we share here during our ePlan trainings in Canada. We share a new template, which then has a different approach for wire numbers and its display. If I actually get closer here, you will see how this works is basically, as you can see here, the wire number is above the wire and just below, we actually have the 16 BK, even though it's not even assigned on the connection definition. Why? The reason is simple, is because we go to the potential value here and we assign a cross section BK, we assign it here, and this then gives me automatically this display here. Now, the way we do it, and this is also nice because you can see it actually flips in both directions. The way we do it is we do it using a different display arrangement, which we created. And this display arrangement uh, takes over the connection block property. So technically, if you go here to the connection, not the connection definition point, but a higher level there, you have access to the block property. Now, for those of you who do not know how these block properties go, block properties are basically re um, reacting onto the block format, the format of the block property corresponding that you defined. The fun part is that you do not have to define it individually on each element. You can do it at the project level. So what we did is we went in here and you can see here all categories and I have one category, I have the format. I can see here the block property format connection number one. And this here is where I picked from the function itself, right here, the function, which is up here, the function, I picked the uh, connection information and I just moved over here, moved to the right, and there I picked whatever I'd like to use. It could be the color, uh, it could be the cross section, diameter, with unit, without unit. So any of those are the two that I picked. The other thing that I did is I also added a small separator between the cross section diameter and here the connection color number. I added a small blank. Of course, in some cases, people may prefer some special character. Could be a slash, forward slash, uh, with a space in front, space behind, whatever. And this actually makes it interesting because this separator will then show up as, you know, uh, directly here between the color and the gauge. Also interesting, is that by default, when you actually look up most of these other devices, so all of the symbols inside ePlan have a default value here as property arrangement, and you will find something really interesting. The block property one is here. So the block property one is intended for you to be able to actually program it 
either on the device itself. So here, if you actually go and check it out, if you don't have it down in the list at the bottom here, just go out for the block property format. Now I do have the one and the two already picked. That's why they're not here. Um, so if you carefully look in this list here, somewhere in here, we have the block property one. Now, if you define something here, any text, okay, this text will appear automatically, boom, here where the block property actually appears. If you want to do more than just text, you can click here on the three dots and you can go and get information such as, let's say, from the parts, from the first part, you would like to get the part number. So I'm just going to go here, part, part number, find the part number. And what will happen is it will concatenate the something, any text and the part number. Of course, if you do not have anything here, so the content here is entirely and completely empty, then it will actually look up at the project level here and it will look for the block property format general one and it will actually look at the information that you tag here. And here, what you can do is, see, in this case, I'm actually putting in the order number. Now, let's say we, we start just from scratch, how does it work? You take the parts, you put it over here, you say you want the order number, if that's all you want. The order number is typically enough. You will get all order numbers. If you pick the part one, it's only go for part one. Let's go with the order number, and then let's go with the part number for just one. Okay, just to understand a little bit how this works, and I will actually use a separator here to put a separator, like a line break in between these two items. So we will see two lines appear automatically. You will basically be able to pick which one you prefer. So here you can see, which one do you prefer? PXC 304-3507, and you can see down here, right? Or do you prefer the, just the order number? In most cases, the people that actually ask me this information or this type of information, they were actually happy when they had the order number because this is really what you go and pick individually and boom, it applies. And the funny part is you do not have to go into the display here and add anything. You do not have to go individually in here and say, okay, I'd like to see the part, part number one, uh, order number, and then you can place it. It automatically gets programmed through the block property format and the block property format because it is displayed. You do not have to do this add on here. You just have to stay with the default. It is there by default. Nothing appears by default. And then you make it display. Now, if you want to turn it on and off, it's actually a fairly easy thing because remember in ePlan, when you want to turn off information, you don't have to delete it from this list here. You just have to look at the layer. Most likely this layer is unique to that specific selected property. If that layer 512 is turned invisible, automatically, if you haven't touched it, it will turn invisible. So the layer management, right? Layer management here will have for this particular project, a section here. Let's always make sure when you have multiple projects to have the right one open. It's the property placement. And then down here in the list, you will end up falling over to 512. All you have to do is make it on one side invisible. And of course, if you move this over a little bit, you can see also it affects the printing separately. So you wanna make it invisible and not print. And this way, it just goes away unless you U, because if you click the letter U, okay, this is a shortcut for the same thing as view invisible elements. Shortcut U, you can see it here up there, and then it will display, okay? Now, this is also something that you can do as a designer. You can actually keep these informations invisible 
And by keeping them invisible, you as a designer can turn them on very quickly if you need them. And remember, this information is in your schematics, but most likely will be repeated in all the different reports that you have out there if you wish to. So is it really necessary to actually show the part number when the bill of material will actually show you all the details, including device tags and everything? It is a question that you can ask yourself, is it really something that you need to do? If so, because somebody requested it, no problem. So I just will turn my layer back on because I like the information. And here are the 512, of course, project, property placement in this area here. Remember, 512 was there. And all I have to do is just turn it on. So visible and, of course, print. I always recommend to keep these two equivalent because otherwise you get surprises. Why doesn't it print? But it shows. Okay. So here, bingo, you get the information. You can see it. There it was, the uh, 5. Um, which one did I actually turn on? I think I turned on the 500 and not the 512. Um, but this is really just a matter of setting it up. Thank you. This was Roland from ePlan Canada. If you have some ideas of things you'd like to see, just put it down in the comments. Uh, don't hesitate. Uh, I try to do these videos in a regular fashion. Uh, if you have any specific topics you'd like me to cover that I can cover in a YouTube video, I will. Otherwise, do not hesitate. Contact our support people. They can do training sessions with you, consulting sessions with you about very specific topics. Um, you understand that these videos are limited to a certain period of time. The consulting sessions can go on for a whole afternoon if needed or a whole day if needed. We can even come on site. Don't hesitate. Call us up uh, anywhere in the world in 55 different countries. We have colleagues that can help you out. Thanks. This was Roland. I'm just in Canada. Thanks. Bye.